Jess Ikes wasn't planning on leaving L.A. anytime soon. And at this stage in life, she definitely didn't think she'd be moving back in with her folks in Vero Beach, Florida. It's very embarrassing to feel like I'm a grown person who can't pay my bills, but I know I'm not the only one. She's in the industry, as they call it here in L.A., and even though she's not a writer or an actor, the ongoing strikes in Hollywood have left her out of work for months, leaving her to pack up over 20 years of memories. Oh, I have to think about what will fit in a 10 by 10 storage unit. So that has been stressful. Ikes is one of hundreds of thousands who have done the work that have helped Hollywood tick, working as location manager on shows like The Dropout. What if you could test your blood in your own home? And what if it wasn't a whole vial, but just a drop? And hacks. It's going to be hard to work together if we can't communicate. We don't work together. You work for me. You're making it really hard. Most people think, oh, people in Hollywood, they, they must be actors or producers mm -hmm. or writers. What is it that you actually do, Jess? Sometimes I scout. I'll do the contracts, agreements, negotiate the price. Once we get the location set, then I find parking lots, crew parking, base camp parking, truck parking, put in the permits, kind of like being an event planner but planning a wedding every week. When sag after it joined Picket Lines in July, the industry had already been reeling for months from the domino effect of the writer's strike. I know that this strike is not easy. In fact, it's hard. It's very hard. And with the passing of time, it's going to even get harder. And just last week, a show of force as A-listers hit the picket lines. Here to support the union as a proud SAG after a member. And Margot Robbie, Oscar Isaac, Cal Penn, and John Cho, among the biggest names to join in solidarity. Actors, writers, makeup artists, crew members, all fighting as one as the SAG after and Writers Guild strikes wage on. And thousands of people like Jess are having a hard time making ends meet. I was collecting unemployment, which is helpful but not survivable not in la yeah really. it's 450 dollars a week and that is not a lot so yeah i borrowed money uh i got money from my dad i got my aunt randomly sent me a check i did food stamps for the first time between the WGA and sag after over 170,000 people are out of work. And while Jess isn't in either union, she's one of more than 700,000 Californians included in the industry. This has affected everyone top to bottom. It's not just writers and actors. It affects the sound editors that work on these, on these shows. It affects the production designers who build the sets, the cinematographers who shoot, the editors that put these shows together. Both unions have their own contracts and lists of demands for the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. For writers, their big sticking point is surrounding the writer's room. They want a minimum writers on shows for uh, X amount of weeks. For SAG, one of their main sticking points is regarding residuals and data transparency. The strike is trickling down to every part of the Los Angeles economy. As I'm estimating right now that the overall impact is is upwards of $5 billion uh, right now total in terms of the economy of, of California. And that's not just the, the losses certainly um, that the studios might incur, things like that, but that's also the um, discretionary income that, that workers and things like that, your actors and your writers aren't able to spend on goods and services that they normally would. And now entering what should be the fall premiere season, viewers will feel the effect as some of the most popular shows are delayed. There's not going to be fall returning TV, no Abbott Elementary, no Shrinking, no all these shows that you've grown to love are going to return and won't return for some time because when we go back to work, it's not like just turning a switch and everyone's back to work. And the 2023 Emmys were supposed to air last night, but have been rescheduled to early 2024. One of daytime TV's biggest stars, Drew Barrymore, was set to return for her show season four premiere this week after previously standing in solidarity with the unions. I've been through so many ups and downs in my life. And this is one of them. 
Thank you. The host was hit with fierce backlash online and stood by her decision in this since deleted social media video. We aren't going to break rules and we will be in compliance. I wanted to do this because, as I said, this is bigger than me and there are other people's jobs on the line. But after mounting pressure online, Barrymore reversed course, announcing the show would go on pause until the strikes conclude. When they come back, people remember who stood with them during these negotiation times, who stood with them when they were fighting for their livelihood. I first spoke with Kendrick Sampson back in July on the first day of the sag after strike. There are no excuses. Right now you're being greedy and inhumane. He expressed his frustrations about what he deems unfair residual compensation for his work on HBO's Insecure and countless other popular shows. I got an envelope of 56 checks, and out of 50 of them, I would, I would even say, I would even venture to say 10 of them didn't equal a dollar. How many times do you think you've come out to picket? Like, we caught up with Kendrick back on the picket lines as the strike continues into its second full month. Are people getting desperate at this point? People were desperate in the beginning. We're just exhausted. It's breaking my heart to see how many people, and people don't understand, especially for black folks, Every person that leaves is a bit of the infrastructure that we have to protect our stories. Is there a point at which people have to relent and be like, okay, we're gonna lose, but maybe we can moderate our demands? No, no. If you do that, you lose sight of what we're fighting for. So if we relent, we get the pennies that we started with, and we know we deserve more. The AMPTP and WGA head back to the negotiating table tomorrow, but in the meantime, some big name stars have used their larger platforms to advocate in solidarity. Promoting his independent film at the Venice Film Festival, Adam Driver spoke out about the discrepancies between big studio and indie projects. Why is it that a distribution company, a smaller distribution company, like Neon and STX International, can meet the dream demands of what SAG is asking for, but a big company like Netflix and, and Amazon can't. The likes of Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Nicole Kidman, Ben Affleck, and more contributing millions to the strike fund, which provides emergency funds and health care for striking actors. Now, if The Rock were to stand on a picket line, the perception might be you make hundreds of millions of dollars. Why? What are you fighting for? There are people that are out there that are fighting for the people that, that need help, but they also don't want to suck up all the oxygen in the room. All right, well, we're all moved into storage. Behind me is my whole life in a 10 by 10 storage unit. For now, Jess is trading the life she knew in Tinseltown for a new one in the Sunshine State, but she says this isn't goodbye, it's see you later. How long do you think you're gonna be out there for? I'd like to think that sometime after January 1st, I will drive back and there will be work. Every time I talk to someone, everyone thinks we won't be back to work until the new year. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.